Um, you know who it is, Israel Adesanya. And I am with the great, phenomenal Teddy Atlas. My man, bless you and thank you for doing this. Appreciate Pleasure. it. Pleasure. No worries. Um, what a time to be alive, yeah. especially in combat sports right now, because we're here for the same reason uh, in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, to watch uh, the main event tomorrow night, Francis Ngannou versus Tyson Fury, the Gypsy King. And um, I just wanted to pick your brain because you've been in this game a long time. If you don't know, do your Googles. We don't have to introduce Teddy. He's a legend in this game. But also what I, I liked is I saw you over the last maybe five years kind of realize that, okay, MMA, especially the UFC, is the, if not, if not one of the biggest combat sports platform on the planet. So you started to chime in and give your takes. And we even had a couple of interviews. Um, I think one was when I was in quarantine during the COVID times. And I like your take because you've, regardless if it's MMA or boxing, fighting is fighting. And you understand fighting at a different level, which I really respect. So I wanted to get your take on the atmosphere of all of this. Like, crazy. What a time to be alive. Yeah, I mean, 75% of our fight, mm -hmm. our business is mental. Mm. You know, otherwise, I used to joke. Um, I don't know if I can joke about it anymore because the world has changed so much. But You can joke about anything here. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> We don't but, do canceling. No, we don't believe in that. <laughs> yes. Or worry about that. But Venice Beach was an area in California that was very well known. Uh, it's probably more known as Tent City now for homelessness oh, yeah. problem, unfortunately. Mm. Um, that That is a problem uh, to see those poor people that obviously they, it's not just about the poverty yeah. of economics, but it's the poverty of the mind, yeah. you know, where they, there's mental illness and yeah. things like that. Drug like use, that, all yeah, that kind of that, stuff. That are, uh, that are rampant. And remember when I first went there, it reminded me of Mad Max, like this, you know, the movie Mad Max, like a fancy Mad Max, but with a lot of pizzazz. Yeah, and back then, uh, I used to use the analogy that when people would talk about boxing or what it took to be obviously superior to anybody else was that if it was just about the physicality of the sport then you'd go to venice beach and you'd have all your future world champs yeah. you know they were they were all out there flexing mm -hmm. and and it's pretty impressive yeah. well, at least it used to be yeah. and but that's not the case because 75 percent of it is mental mm -hmm. it's the application of whatever ability you have mm -hmm. and and once that's understood, once you can go into those domains and those dimensions and understand and tap into those things and how deep those things are, mm. there's no limit to what you can get out of whatever you do have physically. Mm. You don't have to be the Venice Beach prototypical athlete or muscle man that that we equate with strength. Yeah. Actually, you start to say, well, it's got nothing to do with it. Mm. <laughs> it's up there. Yeah, I mean... Because you you see you know skinny old guys like you you're kind of skinny yeah very uh, yeah. <laughs> skinny clown <laughs> yeah. skinny clown but, but not skinny yeah. here yeah yeah you know exactly. and that's skinny here yes and um and you see those guys perform at levels with the more physically you know astute guys if you want to use that kind of terminology um, and and dominate you know and again. It's, it's being able to tap into those places. And sometimes I think it's a disadvantage if you got the physicalities and, and only that. And because sometimes you've never been forced to tap into those other areas. Mm. You know, there was a, uh, a and, and I love this guy. So I don't want anyone to think what I say is demeaning. Like yeah, some people think it is, like there's a guy named Canelo here. Yeah. And, and you some know, guy. yeah, <laughs> some guy and Canelo. they got everyone here. <laughs> And look, tremendous fighter. But I, I made a comment that he's not the greatest Mexican of all time. Mm. But the people that are around now want him to be. Why? Because we're selfish. Right now. We're selfish. We're, this we're, we're selfish. It's the whole we're LeBron versus um, Jordan thing. People who weren't around in his era, in the Jordan era, 
they forget. They see how great he is. They see the stats, but they don't realize because they are watching LeBron right now. It's so true. Yeah. And and same thing. So I happen to know, you know, I happen to know some of those guys that were around some years You've ago. You've been around. That, that they don't know. Yeah. And, and their resume is greater. Mm. That's all. I'm not saying he's not tremendous, yeah. but they're great. All of a sudden, I'm a... I'm a Canelo hater, and I don't like Mexicans. Yeah. Well, oh my God. Well, no, <laughs> but no, it's okay. It comes yeah. right off. Good. Be- because I know what I am, yeah. and I know what I intended, and and then I, you know, I try to help those poor people mm. a little bit with their ignorance, mm. a little bit. Not that I'm not smart, but yeah. the, the, I know what I don't know, and and I say, listen, I just told you that these other Mexicans are great. So how could I not like Mexicans? <laughs> TikTok generation. They don't you know, understand. It's just like that quick attention span. They're looking for the next click. It's, it's the same sort of element, the same neighborhood um, that, that we're talking about. Yeah. You know, with, with, these, with these type of things and comparisons, uh, when you compare one thing to another, one person to another, uh, it's not, again, it's not that you're taking on knock on anybody it's just that you're pointing out something also it's your opinion and you're entitled to the way I, I say this is arts right even if it's boxing jujitsu whatever martial arts art is subjective some people might have canelo as the greatest mexican of all time some people might have julio cesar chavez the greatest mexican boxer of all time but again it's subjective depending on and also canelo's still going it's yeah, not just about numbers he's still going as well he's still right he's going up and wait, fighting bigger guys, fighting the best guys right now, trying to unify the belts. Yeah, crazy times, but it's art. And then subjective. So we're all entitled to feel how we want to feel about whatever. And yeah. Again, I think sometimes the point I was touching on was sometimes when we're blessed with all these physical attributes, that it can be a curse. And in the way that in a way that the person I was going to mention that I love is Mark Breland. Now, Mark Breland in the United States is known as one of the greatest amateurs ever. Okay. And, and he, he was a great amateur. I think he was like 101 wins and one loss, whatever it was. Wow. And, and Lomachenko was 400 wins, one loss. So yeah. the, but we're talking about Mark Breland in the United States was six-time Gold Glove champ, um, all those wins, Olympic gold medalist, he was supposed to be the next it. Mm. Whatever it was, he was the next Sugar Ray Robinson. He was the next, you know, and it didn't quite work out that way. He won a welterweight title, but then he held it for a very short period of time, got knocked out, never reached the levels that everyone thought. Now, was it the physical part? No. He was knocking everybody out. That, that walked down the street. Yeah. He, he was with the right hand mostly. He was unbelievable. There were people pulling out of tournaments because he was in them. Oh, yeah. You know, he was, that, he he was, was of that level. ilk. Yeah. He was of that level. He was and, that guy. And, and yeah, everything. You know, his, his reputation preceded him everywhere he went. He skipped that. Guy, some guy named Mike Tyson, yeah. he, he used to do that to people yeah. too. Like, uh, he's in there. I, I don't feel too good this week. Yeah. I, you know what? I think I'll skip this one and maybe, maybe I'll make the next tournament. Mm. You know, and... And with Breland, that was happening. And then all of a sudden, he gets into pros, and he's not as resilient. Mm. You know, those, those are all part of the elements. It's, it's not just your power and your quickness and, you know, your How instincts. old was he when he jumped pro? Do you remember? Uh, How old was he when he jumped pro? He, he was, he wasn't young, young. He was in his early 20s, okay. but, you know, at, at prime. Still prime, yeah. Prime. And, and he didn't have... 500 amateurs, which some people do. You know, I just said Lomachenko had 400. He still had a great pro career. But he he wasn't burnt out. He wasn't used up in those kind of ways. So he, he doesn't, you know, show the, not just the physical durability, but the mental durability to get to those places that everybody projected for him. Yeah. And my theory on it is that he didn't have to develop those endurances in the amateurs because he was just running through everyone running through everyone yeah. so he never had to you know find out what was deep inside of him mm. I, the way i say it on my podcast mm. i would oh and you've been on it twice yeah. you were gracious enough to come thank you uh, yeah I, look so i'm only here because you're a good person not because yeah. the great fighter you are thank you i, that, appreciate I that. mean that to me that that's that's why i'm here so he he doesn't ever develop where he has to overcome certain things because his 
physical ability says, don't worry about it, pal. I'll take yeah. care of you. And, you know, at the end of the day, you say, you weren't really as much a friend as I thought you were. Because you never allowed what was in me to come out, yeah. to develop. And, and the way I say it on a podcast, I may have said when you were on, mm -hmm. is that we all have a house. That's us. Yes. And we all have a house. And we don't know how many rooms we're in that house yeah. until we open the doors. And, and sometimes I we do never... remember that, yes. We, sometimes we never open those doors. Yeah. And I'm just saying that Mark, God bless him, great human being mm -hmm. and a great fighter, but not as great as he was expected yeah. to be. Yeah. He never was forced to open up those doors. Yeah. Nah, like the way you put it even um, in the fight, that famous speech, fireman. I use that quote a lot. I use that quote a lot, even myself, when I'm on the Airdyne bike, like, you're a fireman. We breathe in the fire, we live in the fire. And that's why I remember that analogy we talk about opening different doors in your, in your house because you mentioned the uh, gaslam fight. One thing you did say that I appreciate when you broke down the gaslam fight, and I think I, I watched it uh, maybe just after or before. No, just after the fight, you said... After I got knocked down in the first round, second round, I didn't lose focus. I didn't lose hope. I was still right there. I was still right there. Because most people after, you know, first time getting dropped in the UFC, oh shit. And everyone's like, here it is. Finally, he's, he's done. And I didn't lose focus. And I'm glad you, only someone like you can pick up on that. Someone who's as experienced as you can pick up on that. Because then I had to like, right, let's see what's behind this door. Boom. Got to round four, round five, sorry. Let's see what's behind this door. Boom. And I was like, oh shit. I didn't know I had that in me. I knew I did, but like, it gets to a point where you have to test yourself, where you have to see if you're, if you're a fireman, and yeah. And you have to be prepared for those tests, and yeah, you, you have to, you have to have a little bit of a vision, mm. a, l a little bit of a spiritual, I don't wanna go crazy here. Let's go crazy, a little I, bit, we've been here before. Yeah, a yes. little bit of a spiritual sense to yourself that, yes. that you know what? You're supposed to be here. Yeah. And um, guess what? With that supposedness, I use that word, I make yes. up my own words. Good. Um, there's also an obligation on your part to be taking that step, to be ready to take that step, that you've been given that, mm -hmm. that you've been put in a position to go to these places. Yeah. Uh, and you have sort of a commitment and an obligation again um, to open the door when the time comes to to be willing to go there, to yeah. to expect to go there, yeah. and 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 um and and not for it to be written out for you. Just mm -hmm. you hear, okay, I, I'll figure it out. But I was supposed to be here. I got you. Yeah. I, I I have whatever it is. I got to find it. It's here, and I got to go do do. Yeah, <laughs> you, you yeah. know, you, been there. Even me. Okay, so I I don't know if you saw my last fight. My last fight, I got there. There was a point, um, and it was. In other words, there's no different. instructions. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. There's exactly. no manual. There's nah, like, you just okay. know. Yeah. You know. If you know, you know. If you've been there, you've been there. And we know. And, and, it, and part of it for the people listening, mm. I know this sounds crazy, but you told me to go crazy. crazy. Let's go crazy. Uh, yeah. uh, you don't know, but yeah. you know you're supposed to. Yeah. You're going to find out. Mm -hmm. You don't know, yeah. but you're going to find out. And, and that's enough to know. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Like I said, before my, my last fight, I lost my last fight because of... I, so I got to a point in the fight, right, where I was ending around, and I remember looking, I haven't actually said this, I looked down, as I looked down, I saw dripless of blood, and I was like, okay, damn, he got me with that jab, because his jab was different. It was something that, I, it, was like, it was like a hammer fist. It was hitting me with this part of his knuckle, because he was in the stance, right, the Philly shell, and boom, and it was catching me, because offbeat timing i just wasn't there but unexpected unexpected angle. but still kind of like what you said i didn't i never lost hope i went back to the corner i was like right whatever it was round three round four whatever it was i was like right we go this round we must go this round so i was even like when i asked eugene in the, in the fifth round like is this the fifth round he's like yeah i was like right and i said should i just should i just go and he's like no, no let's be tactical because I, I wanted to like i kind of was like fuck it let's go like if i die i die like go out on your shield you know, kill or be killed. But then Eugene was like, no, let's be tactical, right, right, right. And it got to the point where I realized, okay, this fight's getting away from me. And it got to a point where I felt like, damn, it's too far gone. And then, like, you know, when someone's in a race in the 100 meters, it was too far ahead and I just couldn't catch up. And I was just trying my best to try and finish him in the early rounds. But regardless, I never lost hope. That's the thing. And one thing I'm grateful for with myself as well, even now, 
So, you know, I've said I'm taking my time off fighting. I'm enjoying myself. We're in beautiful Riyadh, coming to see the great fights. But I have patience. And that's one thing I've had to learn in this game is patience. Patience in the long run. Look at the Pereira fight. I never looked for like, oh, okay. After the first fight in Brazil, he knocked me out. Oh, no, our second fight in Brazil, he knocked me out. Cool. I was like, well, that's that's that. And then he chased me to UFC. We had Part that... of the journey. Exactly. Part of the story. Get to Madison Square Garden. Beats me in almost the exact same fashion. I'm like, damn, last round again. And I was just like, I don't want the rematch. Because I knew I can beat him in my heart. I can beat him. And how long was that? But the plan was for you to go through that to yeah, get to that place. Exactly. It makes it so much better. The valleys. So when I got to that point in Miami, I just knew this is it. I have to beat this guy. And again, that took seven years, I think, to get to that point. But again, patience. But I think what it's telling you, yeah. 100%, besides patience, mm. the plan, the journey is to get there. Yeah. But does he deserve to get there? Ooh. Does it? Wait, me or does he? Him no, no, you. you. In okay. other words, you got to go through these peaks, valleys, and peaks. And is it like a test? Downs. Yeah. Uh, are, are you? Are, because. I feel like it is. Even right now, it's a, it's no, a test for me. Uh, it, are you deserving to get there? Are you yeah. really believing? It's one thing to say you believe and, you know... You can't but, fake the funk. No. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, I've been there. It's true. Yeah, I, mean, I, know, I've been, I know what you I mean. mean. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> you can't I mean, fake the funk. No. If it's there, it's there. You just it, know. It's one thing to, you know, stand out there on a podium. Yeah. Exactly. Following up what yeah. I was going to say. To stand on a podium and, you know, and, and look good and talk good and everything else and, and you know, just relish in the light and, and the beaming that's coming on you and all that's beautiful. But it's, it's another thing that when the devil knocks on the door, mm. you know, how are you going to respond? Exactly. You Don't know? react, respond. You know how are you going to respond to yeah. that? Yeah, how are you going to respond with the door? And, and it's a combination of two things for me. It's preparing you for that. Strengthening you for that, putting you through that. You know, the old sayings were don't kill us, makes us stronger, right? There's some truth to that. Mm -hmm. And all of these things are building something. I mean, we're so used to the conventional things we build. Like, we're, you just came from a gym. Mm -hmm. you know, you're building these things yeah, up. Right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, get back in the gym. Yeah. 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 No, will, no, you're good. Will, you're good. Hey, you, you go to the gym and you, build, you, you get on the road work to build this, the cardio, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But what's building this? What's be building the resolve? What's building the, you know, the... the endurance mentally that you're Fighting gonna need. Spirit. Yeah. yeah. What's building that? Trials and tribulations. You took the words out of my brain. Literally, you took the words out of my brain. Trials <laughs> and tribulations. Yeah. Yes. I, and and so that's building that. Now that could destroy you too. But if you're the right guy. Yeah. If they chose the right guy. What is it? God God yeah. gives his toughest battle to yeah. his toughest soldiers. If you chose the right yeah. then you're gonna have to prove it. Yeah. You're going to have to prove. So that's what I mean. Like, you're going through all that. Now, they could destroy you, these experiences. That could have been the end of you on that last one. Too much knockout. weight. Boom, so, I'm yeah, done. Yeah. That last one in the garden. Mm -hmm. Done. Boom. No more is he. But it was the right guy. Mm. Because you you continued with it. You you used the word patience. Yeah. You know, and I use different words. You know, resiliency. Yeah. Belief. Belief that... that it is your path that yeah. you're still going to get there, yeah. that, that you were here for a reason. And these things, these bad things yeah. are happening to you for a good reason. They're happening for you, not to you. They're happening for yeah, me. For yeah, you. for a good reason. For, yes, bad yes. things can happen for a good reason. Yes, yes, I agree. Two things can be true at the same time. Honestly, this is why I wanted to talk to him. I don't even lie, like breaking the fourth wall. Because I wanted to talk about the fight, but as soon as I saw you were here, I was like, you know, um, oh, you probably don't know Avatar. He doesn't know the Avatar, the cartoon. The way. <laughs> but Uncle Iroh, right now here in my night. I don't know Iroh. if I want to know now. Yeah, no, okay, Uncle, I'll send you. Okay, Uncle Iroh is a very wise old man. He's the uncle to Zuko, who was like the, the antagonist in the series. Well, he always drops gems when he has a little bit of jasmine tea with Zuko. And that's why I wanted to talk to him. I just wanted that. I just knew. I'm not Zuko, right? No, 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 no. no, no. You're Uncle Iroh. You're a good guy. You're a good guy. Yeah. I, I don't know. But, um, I don't know who's Yeah, who. yeah. But, um, <laughs> Because of this, so example, what you were just talking about, right? Even in the gym before, um, we were training, and I'll be, sh I, I, we're doing just strength work. I'm not really, but then I can't help it. I've just got my headphones and I start shadow boxing. I'm looking in the mirror, and I caught myself because I don't realize I'm in it. Then I start looking in my eyes, and I can see my, my jaw clinch, and I'm like, fuck, I missed the beast. I missed the beast. And even just talking to you now, 
I'm, a, I'm almost perspiring because I'm getting more. I'm like, I'm, I'm not just the heat, like it's conditioned in here, but I'm getting excited because I'm, and then the fight. But I think it's your passion. That's one thing that I really, really appreciate about you is your passion. But I can feel it now. I'm just like, because I said I'm taking a break, right? Bro, when I, when I said that. I got you. You think people, because people were responding to me. You think I, I was like, I'm not dying. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm still here. I'm not retiring. I'm here. I'm just taking a little break because look, four fights in the last 14 months as a champion, wow. active. So I'm like, nah. And also, I got some things I need to fix. So I'm like, let me just take a break. But your man Volkanovski might need yeah. a break too. He, no, he will. No, he mean, will. I, yeah. just, uh, I, I agree. Yeah. I, I just jumped on it's that. Not, it's it's the way we do. Me and him, we're yeah. the two most active champions in UFC history. 100%. So now it's like, okay. And I respect him and he doesn't regret it as well. And I, I love what he did. Even Kamaru as well, taking that fight on short notice. Because who has the cojones to do that? Take on these. Bad motherfuckers, you know, on short I'm notice. Glad you threw in there because right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 100%. same thing as well. But then, as I was looking in the mirror, I realized it's like, it's, it's almost crazy. That's why I love the mirror. It's a magical portal, man. I could see. I was like, I missed the beast, and I kept on saying that fuck. And I just, it's still. I know it's there, but I'm like, no, we gotta just chill. Put it in the stable for now. Just work, and I'll help my teammates when I get back home and whatnot. But it'll get to a point when I come back. I can't wait to unleash it again. But in the meantime, patience. Practicing patience because everything is happening for me. But yeah, I love and, this and stuff. And practice and belief. Or and belief. Yes, I agree. I agree. Practicing the belief in myself. Yeah. That's why, as I like, when I looked in that mirror today before and I that came this up here, was all meant for a greater reason. A greater yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. For, for the. But one thing it told me, though, it, it reassured me. I was like, oh, yeah, you're far from done. Like, I just looking in my eyes and like, see that, that killer. I was like, yeah. But this but, is preparing you for the. Uh, the next premiere. <laughs> exactly. The next. Yes. You know, I mean, uh, the, the next. Uh, and listen, when I say premiere, everyone's going to say, and rightfully so, everyone there is going to say, oh, the premiere on the stage, the stage that we see him, no. where he performs. No, but it's it's the premiere in his house to open the next door. Yes. The next one for me, yeah. for my life, yeah, the one away place. from the cameras. Yes. In your place. I agree. Uh, yes. <laughs> ah, but we're ready, man. Yeah, <laughs> already. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. All right, let's get let's get onto the reason. See, this is why this is why I like the way this guy is passionate. Honestly, I'm, I don't mean it. You're the man. You're the man. But okay, let's talk about this fight, Francis and Tyson. So, with everything that's happened, how this fight came to, came to be. As soon as I saw it was announced, before I even got invited by the great people of Saudi, um, the sheikhs and that. I texted Francis and I said, I am coming to watch you make history. Because if, I don't know if you know Francis' story exactly. From Cameroon and uh, yep. went to France, France and was on the street. The, sent back to the desert yeah. to die. And yeah. then had to, I think three times, no, everything. Six times. Six times. Six times. Yeah, there we it's go. Incredible. I thought it was three times. No, it's so incredible. I've seen the he guy. Was homeless. He was yeah, homeless. Yeah, and then see him rise to the toughest ranks of the UFC, even get beat by the, the champion. Stipe came back, knocked him out. Kept on going, had battles with the brass of the company, went head to head, and then decided, you know what, I'm gonna do it on my own terms. And then now here we are. He's doing exactly ACL what. Got no ACL. Yeah, oh, that's right. In the of the exactly. Ball. Everything. So he rolled the dice in one big, and I feel like we're here now. Like it's about to be the wins of tonight, the fight to tomorrow. I can feel the energy even in Riyadh. It's palpable. You know, when I when I, I can feel it. But for me, as 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 a fighter, as a man. I'm proud of him, regardless of what happens in this fight. But, Teddy, I've seen miracles happen. I've made miracles happen in my life, and I know the magic of when it happens. And I, and I know when the, the decks are stacked against someone, and because Francis is my brother, I ride with him. And I respect Tyson. I love Tyson. He's a character. I love John Fury. Bro, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. He, he's he, got, there's got to be a character in that cartoon yeah, for him. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, yeah. I would think. <laughs> John Fury. I'm just guessing. The, yeah, oh, man. I love that guy. But while we're here, I'm, I'm very, I'm excited about tomorrow because, uh, look, it might, it might not go the way I envision it. It might be like he gets boxed up. And you envision, you hope it too. Yeah, I hope, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah. that's what I, so for me, I'm like, no matter what happens, I'm proud of him. But it's, say, it's, it's, it's the, the testament of times where we're here now and you can have these two big fights. And I think it's good for boxing as well. It is. I think it's good for boxing because you're bringing... Hey, the Rocky movie was good for boxing. Exactly. Really, and then some people think I'm being derogatory. I'm not. I mean... It, At the it, time, yeah. fuck yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it brought people over that yep. wouldn't have come over. Because they're watching the movies and like, oh shit, oh, there's a real boxing fight happening. And they actually become fans of the sport. Even these um, 
like the, the, the yeah exactly the Paul brothers the the you know the YouTube 100%. boxers as well Salt Papi all them it's good it's good for boxing because it brings a lot of eyes to the sport and I don't I don't like what people say like even with Showtime pulling away I think next year they say our oh, boxing is dying I'm like no nah, no nah, it's not gonna die boxing will never die it just needs a revamp and I think the Paul brothers are doing that Tyson and Francis are doing that with this fight not revamp I'd say but like more fire you know more fire to boxing Canelo's doing that even now with um Crawford and Spence having that fight um, Garcia, Javonta having that fight. It's it's about the best fighting the best. Yeah, it's important. That's what needs to happen. Not promoters trying to protect their asset and protect that O. Nobody wants to go to a movie. They know the ending. <laughs> want, want to be excited, you know? Yeah, yeah, you know, put on something that you can see what if. Yeah, exactly. What if. Right. This is one of those fights. What ifs. But, man, like, how are you feeling about the fight as a professional or even as, as a man? How are you feeling about the fight itself? Uh, I, I'm going to say it straight. Uh, it's a money grab, but it's a dangerous money grab, mm. and and it's uh, it's a dangerous money grab on the side of Tyson Fury, where it, only Francis knows inside of him if it's purely a money grab or not. Only he knows. Like we're talking about the same yeah. stuff we just finished talking about, yeah. the the deep stuff. But we say it's deep, but it's deep to some people. But but it's really not that deep. It's everything. It's 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 obvious. It's evident. It's, I mean, it's really the lifeblood of success. Yeah. Do you really believe? Yeah. Or or did you, did you check your belief somewhere because they were paying you pretty good? Yeah. Did, you know, did, did is there a compromise there? You know, and we we all compromise ourselves in life. Mm -hmm. We like to think better, our egos are our egos. We like to think better, but we all do. But it's a matter of not compromising yourself in certain places, yeah. certain places. Mm -hmm. And if he hasn't, if Francis hasn't compromised himself with himself, mm -hmm. with himself, then he can pull it up. But it, it's more than power. That's almost, I don't know, you mean it's power as in like power? Punching. Oh, okay, punching power, yeah, okay. Because that's almost cliche. Yeah. And and everyone's got power. Yeah, and it's almost way. ignorant. Because to to think, well, what, what are you talking about? I mean, he Tyson Fury is only here now and as big as he is because he survived the biggest puncher in boxing. Why? Wow. Deontay, yeah. yeah. And he was on the floor and he survived it. He he had a chin, he had a heart, what he had a, a story, resolve. Though, man. Incredible. Man. And and he and he survived it. And that's the only reason he's here. So yeah. if it was just power, Wilder would be here. Yeah. So it's not just if it was just power, Ernie Shavers would well, have been athletes, Muhammad like you Ali. Said, it's about this yeah. and this. Ernie Shavers could knock a wall down with his right hand. Mm. And and but you know, and he fought Ali and he fought Holmes and Holmes is here and that's another great one. He got off the floor twice with Shavers. And, you know, it, if it was just about the power, again, Shavers would have been the Ali, would have been the Holmes, would have been... The, it, it, through the history of, of not just boxing, but life, yeah. it's never about just the power. Mm. Who punches harder? Who, who you know, who, who has the most... Uh, physical assets, or or even sometimes who who's the smartest guy in the room. Mm. It, it's 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 beyond that. Yeah, it's beyond that, and that's and we're beyond that now, and that's what we're talking about. Mm. And because if it's only about that, then Francis has no chance because the power law, custom model, my mentor, yep. pretty smart guy, very smart guy, uh, smarter than me. He used to say, hopefully, or much smarter, mm. and he used to say, Teddy. I was a young 18-year-old, you know, and uh, and confused about some things and sure about others, uh, even though I didn't even know if, uh, what it was going to take as much as I thought I was sure. You know, I, I want to be champion of the world, then I had an injury, and I, he wanted me to become a trainer, and he thought I had an ability to teach that, that not everyone has. He said it's one thing to have information or knowledge and other to be able to transport it to someone else to give it to someone else and you can do that and you can make chair all that stuff it, it was confusing mm -hmm. i was like and when i was this young trainer he would drum into my head look it's not just about power and then later on i had tyson mm -hmm. and it's not if it was just about power he said we would all these military weapons would have no value yeah. because 
They need a missile to get it to the target. A to B. Yeah. yeah. And and without it, he used to, he wanted to get in my head, so he had a way of saying it. He goes, without it, a bomb, a missile, all it can do is detonate, make a big hole in the ground, and when it rains out, you go swimming. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? And, and he said, and he's putting it through to me, you have to have a device, a, a missile, a, a, a delivery system to get it to the target. And it's not the physical only. It's the ability to to have that system work under pressure, yes. under, under the pressure that there's gunfire coming in as you're trying to get it to the target, and and it's all of that. It encapsulates all of that, mm. and all that has to be built. Yeah. And I think Francis has the part we talked about with his story and with his journey. He has those parts. Yeah. Now he also needs the physical delivery part of it. Mm. And he also needs to make sure that he didn't check more than his hat mm -hmm. uh, at the, uh, you know, at the desk. He didn't bite more than he can chew. Yeah, he didn't check more than his hat there in a way that that he forgot his journey. Yeah. That he forgot why he's here, mm -hmm. and that this was part of his journey from the beginning of being homeless and everything else. Yeah. That he didn't forget that, and he thinks that this is the, this this is where. The last stop and and the money that he was attached to and all that uh, that it's got to go beyond that yeah. and the physical part of it has to be that he's had enough time and enough control over his ego to allow him to have learned some of the fundamental things not just to say I'm just going to land a big punch and and to say I'm just going to land a big punch because he is a big puncher mm -hmm. and I always say punches are not made, they're born. Yeah, <laughs> and and he, so he, he has that. But what he has to understand is that if he's just gonna throw the ball, then he's already lost. Mm -hmm. because, he, because he's already depending more on hope mm -hmm. than, than on, on, on- Something tangible that he yeah, can actually do. A really known and believe it. Yeah. It, 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 it's not really belief. It's just a hope, and and usually it could be a false hope, mm -hmm. where if if it's just I'm just gonna land a big punch, mm -hmm. you know I'm just gonna go, no then he's looking for something easy, then he's looking for hope, yeah, you know what I mean? You're just looking for something easy. I'm gonna go land a big punch, and, and you know, mm -hmm. and and then when that doesn't happen, he's lost. Yeah. He has to have that delivery system, and what mm -hmm. that is is. It's, there's a lot of parts to it. It starts probably with the jab, yeah. understanding range, distance, because I think the Tyson man got like, a longer reach. Yeah, he's Tyson, longer. Yeah. And he's he, got a he's nice taller. jab. I like, Tyson, and I like his one too. And he's light on his legs. Yeah. And, and he can control, he can change range on you. Mm -hmm. And he can get you to make mistakes, to, to fall into space. Mm -hmm. stuff empty like space, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's got to learn. Those things have to have been given to him. And again, he's had to have or he would have had to have had control over his ego mm -hmm. to allow himself to to mm -hmm. to learn those things yeah. to believe that those things were part of what he needed to get this there yeah you know otherwise it, it's it's, gonna be a long it's nice. yeah, yeah. Uh, because if uh, a friend of mine called me it was funny um i was i was in london and on the way here, because there was no direct flight, so we stopped in Heathrow. And he called me up and he said, my son is who I happen to be the godson of. Mm -hmm. he is, and this man is from Boston. He's a, a very good writer, sports writer, boxing, everything. And he called me up and he said, my son has a little problem. Can he talk to you when you get back? I said, of course, talk to him. I'd be glad to. And he mm -hmm. said, he's having a confidence problem. He's a really good hockey player. How old is he? He's uh, 15. Okay, young and he, teenage. And, yeah, and he's having a problem where the other day he's one of the best players, and um, and he's going to go to college with the, you know to a Division One college with a scholarship, which is a great thing, mm -hmm. great accomplishment, and um, and to save his father some money too. Mm -hmm. And so he, <laughs> so he, that's why the father's like, we got to yeah. have this talk. I'm yes. kidding around. And um, he said he was on a breakaway. He said he's supposed to score. I mean, he's the best player on the ice, not even close. Mm. And uh, he missed a shot. He he takes a shot from too far away that doesn't make any sense. He doesn't make any moves, and it's easily blocked. 
and he's trying, the father's trying to figure out what, you know, and he's kind of upset at him. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you doing? The kid himself says, I want to talk to Teddy. Ah, uh, okay. I want to talk to Teddy. He knows there's something there, but he doesn't know how to get there. The kid, so, the he kid, knows something the kid. was wrong. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm, I already know what I'm going to tell the kid. Mm. Oh, I'm going to tell me. Tell, yeah, I'm going to tell him the same thing I'm tell, I would tell Francis. Yeah. I mean, here's this thing. Yeah. Before it's too late, yeah. where. If, well, I'll send it to him. If you. You can hide things, you can cover things, but at the end, it all comes out. It all comes out in the wash. If you just go there and just take the shot, you had no, you were, you took the easy way out. Here's the easy way, even though you lost. How's that easy, Ted? You, you didn't get it. They, you, that was an easy way. It's the hard way. Now you have to suffer with the disappointment, with, with the loss that you didn't score. You didn't win the game for your team. When you had an out there and you're the best player. No, no, you took the easy way out. Because if you would have used all your skills and all the things that you developed and you had to and stuff, and, and you fake here, fake there, go there and hold it that, that split second longer, like you have to hold that punch, yeah. just that split second longer, like you did in your second fight with Pereira. Yeah. A few it, seconds, it, find yeah, the spot, yeah. find the spot, boom, boom, there Not it is. Too soon, yeah. too late. If, too soon, I would have been, yeah, yeah no I would have yeah. Just right. Uh, and when the danger was there, yeah. you, you had to wait for the lion to come out. And I'm then, right there. Yeah. I can see and, everything. And, 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 and like, the mouth yeah. open. Check and the mouth. Yeah. Yes, yes. You know, yeah. you, just, you just didn't want the mouth to close nah. because it would have closed on your head. Mm -hmm. so, but, uh, you, so you have to be willing to take that risk. And I don't just mean the risk where people say the risk, you know, the physical. The, this wasn't a physical risk. It was an emotional risk. Yeah. That's the biggest risk of all. Yeah. And, yeah, that you have to live with. And so here he is, and I know what the problem was already, where he, instead of making a move and, you know, doing all the things he had to do, he just shot. He took the easy way because I'll tell you why. And Can this I is guess? the magic of it. This is why. Yeah, guess, guess. Was it the pressure? No, it's, it's the pressure, but it's this. It's that... If he makes all those moves and does everything that's expected of him, right, and, and he don't do it, he's not as good as he's supposed to be. Oh, this way he okay. just missed. Yeah. So it took the easy way. Like, Magic. Oh, well, yeah. Genius. Human nature is ingenious. It helps us survive. Self-preservation. Yeah. yeah. Strongest instinct because in the human animal. If he would have made all those moves, he would have done that. And then ah, <laughs> he, he's not as good as we thought he was. Now it's just that, you know, he just missed a shot. He didn't, uh, you know, he, he didn't he didn't use all those things. If he did, he would have been, he would have beat that guy. He would have had that guy laid yeah. out. You have it on the back, like what if, the what if. Yeah. You can kind of, so, what? Well, you survived that. Yeah. And that's the thing for Francis. That that if he, it's the same thing. There'll be a moment in the fight. And it's the same thing. If he goes in there and just throws the punch, which is the easiest thing. Because, uh, okay, it didn't land. He tried. No, no, he didn't really try. He has the deep part, deep waters. Well, he didn't really try because if he really tried, he would have contained himself. He would have got closer. Mm -hmm. Would have got closer to uh, mm -hmm. uh, and then boom, do it at the right take, time. Take the risk instead of throwing it. The risk. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, and I that, know what you mean. And, and that's what he needs. Yeah. And if you don't have that, no. Damn, that's deep. I can relate to that. I'll tell you after this, but then. In my head, I'm as you're saying it, I'm like, ah, bet I get what you mean. I, I think, you know, it's, it's weird how the the world works this way. Because the reason I wanted to talk to you and I knew straight away, I was like, I'll, I'll get the gems I need from from Teddy. Because it wasn't just for Francis or like about the fight or anything. For me, I was just like, I just want to talk to you because I knew I'd get some kind of gem. And that right there, big thing. Not even about fighting itself, life stuff, but like it's it's powerful. Because then you have to, and I've done it before, but again, in my life. Growing up, and also on the big stage, I've I've taken the easy way out. I've taken the easy way, not just in fighting. We just, all out. I'm human, so this is what I, I just wanted to hear. That okay, bet. But I'll make sure I'll make sure I deliver the message to Francis. I know I will. Man, fuck, that's exactly what I needed. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you're a powerful brother. You're a very powerful speaker, and yeah, fuck. If I've got chills in my head now, now I have to like sit down and ponder on this. Like, okay, bet. Don't take the easy way out. It's right there. Because I've done it before, like you said, in Miami, it was right there. And I remember the sequence as well. Because again, you know, my leg was hurt. It's compromised. And I was like, fuck. 
I was like, you know what? He knows my legs hurt. Because I went southpaw for body kick. And I was like, no, nah, just give it to him. And I just kind of went shell. And I waited for him. And then he got confident, a little cocky. And it's like, okay, I can just will him. I'm going to knock him out. And I was there the whole time. You watch a slow-mo. My eyes were on him the whole time. And then when I felt the moment, I didn't really see it. My eyes were on him because I was looking at the target. You're looking at only what you want. Exactly. Not what you want. Yeah. But I felt him. I felt yeah. the moment right no, there. No, but but there's certain things that we're talking about that still weren't that mm. that are there that have been there in the past, mm -hmm. and you've got to bring them back. Yeah. Oh no, that's why I'm taking this time. That's why I'm taking this time up. And people, like I said, they like I said, people are talking like I'm retiring or I'm taking like five years off. I'm like chill. Don't worry. My time off is different to most people's time off. People take two years off. I'm not doing that. Yeah. Because I also one thing as well, I, like I said, four fights in 14 months, because I know I'm on the back end of my career. I was trying to, because I know when I'm done with this, I'm going to miss it. So I was trying to do as much as I can. Then I realized it's not about quantity. It's about quality. I'm mm -hmm. still going to enjoy this. So I, like next year when I fight, oh no, I'll fight next year. I don't know when I'm going to fight, but when I fight, it's going to be quality. It's not going to be quantity. I'm not going to, because again, there's only so much room, even though I, I made it work for me as a champion, but there's only so much room and I'm just like, look, just is, take some time. So I'm going to take my time now and then l learn all these lessons. And it's going to be the real easy, the whole easy. Yeah. And I don't want to take anything from my last opponent, Strickland, because no, he, no. he did well. And also he was his prepared. coach, Eric, yeah, Eric as well. Like I talked to him after the fight. He's, he's here in Francis Corner and I talked to him after the fight and I gave him props and I told him like there was times you saved him because you were calling things and I was like, fuck, he's reading me. So Eric was reading me and telling me, telling him what he's about to do. And I was just like, fuck, okay. I might throw it or I might not throw it because he already knows it's coming now. So I gave him credit. But like you said, the real Izzy, the real me, when I come through, yeah. Eddie, I appreciate that, Teddy. Thank you so much for this. Oh, okay, wait. About the fight. All right, what's up, okay. Teddy? How do you think the fight plays out? I How do you feel? I think Fury wins um, unless... Unless uh, Francis has gotten a hold has gotten a hold of the things we just talked about, because he does have he was born to punch. He's mm. he's and if he can, like, the only problem he's got that greater race of Francis. He does, and the greater race of sins. You know, it's uh, kind of like in my religion, in uh, the Catholic religion, we believe that you go into a confessional booth mm -hmm. and you confess your sins and you cleanse Forgive yourself. Forgive me, Father. Yeah, <laughs> I have sinned. I've sinned a lot. Yes, we have. <laughs> and, yeah, you got a couple of days, Father, because, yeah. you know, this, <laughs> this might take a little. I got a list. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while, Father. And uh, But, you know, and it, it's supposed to cleanse. Well, when you have that power, it can automatically cleanse and erase a lot of sins. Mm -hmm. And but again, the thing is that he has to he he has to have really bought into what we talked about. That you know he's not going to take the easy way. He would never he would never interpret it or translate that to himself that he took the easy way because he'd be in there trying, throwing, you know, taking a risk. You know, sometimes guys take a risk. Wait to hear this one. Sometimes guys take a risk because it's easier to take a risk to get it over with. Ah, uh, yeah, I've, oh, I've seen this. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, when I Mike Tyson came back, yeah. when Mike Tyson came back, and, and God bless the guy, he wasn't that level, but uh, that he fought after he was away for the three years in prison, every day, and he came back and, and um, he knocked out the guy that he knocked out, Peter McNeely, I believe. And everyone said, well, you know, the guy tried. He went after him. He went right, tried. No, what he did was he tried to get it over with. Because out of his own out of control, you know, not having that belief system, there was nowhere to believe. So he just ran into the propeller of the airplane. Mm -hmm. he, 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 it was... It was the kamikaze yeah. pilot. You know, he just got it over with. And a lot of people would say, wow, at least he had a lot of guts. And yeah, he had guts to get in there. I'll, I'll never take that away from anyone. But it wasn't about that. It was about that he had no belief. He had no, at all. And some people say, of course not, Teddy. He had no chance. So be it. But the bottom line, you don't have know if you have a chance to, you know. And the only way you're going to know is if you gave yourself a chance. And the only way you gave yourself a chance is if, you were able to 
deal with the things we're talking about and not just go in there and confuse having a chance with taking a chance mm. with where you're, you're going to go in there and you're going to show risk. You're going to go in there, kamikaze, you're going to go right at the guy with nothing else, without the plan, without the control, with, without the, the true belief mm. that, that you're using it just to get it over with because this, this monster that's standing in front of you of a- apprehension, of anxiety, of, of fear, this monster, you, you just want to go and sometimes you run into the monster and let him eat you up mm. because you don't, it's harder to, to face that monster for an extra minute or 10 minutes yep. or whatever. You don't want to be in the, with the, in the tank with the shark too long. Yeah. So you're like, fuck, I'll try my best. Guy just yeah. hours out, try and do whatever. Oh, that didn't work. Well, jump. Yeah, you just, and you call it freezing, whatever you want to call it, but it's this. And Francis is going to have to be able to come to terms with that or have come to terms with that. I don't know if he has. I don't know if he has, I'll be honest. I don't know. But if he has, he's got a chance. Um, at, at the end of the day, the one thing about the eraser, though, having that great eraser, is that the other guy that he's fighting, he Fury, he, he, he don't have it to that level, but he's got a great chalkboard that, <laughs> that, that doesn't erase too easy. <laughs> do, you, do you think Fury will stick to the game plan like that he's that. put out there? Did he put it out there? Uh, yeah, Fury uh, said that he's going to want to put him away in the first six rounds. He'll be on the front foot, be in front of Francis, lightning jab. Once the bust up his eyes. If he didn't say that, this fight wouldn't be as enticing. Mm. Let's not forget, not only is Tyson Fury a world champion, he's a world champion promoter. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and a world champion promoter. So is John Fury. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they have to say those things. I'm not saying there's not a belief in it, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, but you know, and then the six comes so and where he's in a 10, you say, gee, but you still have other people sitting in the stands, mm. <laughs> even right. though you didn't get that result. Yeah. You know, so I think the best thing for Fury, to be honest with you, a lot of people, there's two ways he can go. Um, he can walk them down. And, and just say, hello, uh, Francis, welcome to my world. Mm-hmm. And, and, and just walk him down behind the gym and boom. But you got an answer for that? Boom. You got an answer for that? Oh, you're going to try that big bomb? Oh, oh, that didn't work. You know, just take it to him and, and just eat his heart, eat his belief. You know, take that away from him. Um, and sometimes the safest place to be with a dangerous puncher is in close, mm-hmm. where he can't detonate that. Right in close. So you can, that, that is one way that he can approach it. The other way he can approach it is on the outside. Mm-hmm. As you touched on with, with the long arms and yeah. control and range and control and distance where you make, you make Francis make mistakes mm-hmm. and walk him into counters. If I'm forced um, to make a prediction, you know, having said that, and not being prone to sit on the middle of a fence because there's nothing to that. Anyone could do that. I would have to say Fury, you know, will beat him. And it's up to Fury. I think this is up to Fury. It's up to Fury how serious he is about it. It's his world. Yeah, it is. Also, even with him announcing the Usyk fight in the middle of the promotion for this, I thought that was weird, but he came out and said the promoters made that happen because he doesn't like to count his chickens when they hatch. But when he did that, in my heart, I I was like, I don't think he understands who he's dealing with. Like, I've seen Francis with Stipe. Was it five rounds? Yep, five rounds with Stipe Mirchit the first time. This is what he got taken out and beat up. And when you're getting punched on the ground and there's no gift, Tice, I mean, I'm talking Francis's head is on the ground. A hammer fist, boom. The force goes down, hits the ground, and back up. So there's no give, anything like that. He took some shots and never got finished by Stipe, who was, or is arguably one of the greatest heavyweights yeah, ever. Yeah, he is. And comes back in the next fight. After, he got up from that fight busted after five rounds because he was gassed from the wrestling and stuff. He came back leaner, patient, and then <laughs> took his time. To, I like patient Francis. Yeah. Took his time, find it. But again, this is it. This is, this is um, Tyson's world. And he's got the tools. But 
I, if they underestimate Francis to the degree, I hope they're not. But that's if they the are, X it's fact. good. If but that's under, the X fact. Exactly. If they I are, it's, it's, it's again, it's, I've seen Francis, may, I, I've seen miracles happen. Like for me, I'm a, I, like, look, I'm a betting man and I'm allowed to bet on this fight. So I know where my money's going. I'm putting on Francis. Yeah. But miracles happen. And you're getting a good line back too. Uh, bro, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Shout out to <steak> <laughs> Look out for the bet slip. But um, yeah, so I, I made a big bet on this fight because I really believe in miracles, man. And I also, that's my brother. That's my brother, so I'll, I'll go with him. But again, the way they've been talking about this fight, if, if it gets to the point where... And your loyalty is part of your yeah, strength. Yeah. By also, the way. Yes. No, no, I, I and no, but that's part of why I'm here too. Thank you. Thank because you. that Appreciate person. That. Yes, thank you. I Listen, to your point, at the end of the day, the X factor, and you just mm. brought it up, the X factor, there's always an X factor, mm. is how serious did Tyson Fury take this? If he, that really he is. He said that he did a 12 week camp instead of a normal six week camp. Yeah. Okay. Just to prepare for the. You stick as well. Angles Anyone count those weeks? Like Anyone count those weeks? <laughs> <don't know>. <laughs> See, <laughs> here we go. See, promoter, he might have said yeah. that, but then something else behind the scenes happens, bro. Who knows? I, I mean, at the end of the day, if he didn't take to 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 Izzy's, Israel's um, point, if he didn't take him, he being, of course, Tyson Fury, if he didn't take Francis serious, mm. then a real big miracle could happen, mm. you know, where he's he gets careless. Um, you if know, you were Francis's coach, what would you be telling Francis? Like, I, I would teach it's not what you tell him now it's what you told him in the gym I mean, yeah, that's, this that's, man knows that better than anyone yeah, yeah you, you, you now it's you, like it's all you got a this. problem if, if if you're dependent on learning something in the corner <laughs> <laughs> you better have yeah. learned it before yeah. but no I get what you're saying what I'm saying is that if they went over the things that they needed to go over you know I'm going to tell them that I think faints is part of this because the other guy is more sophisticated in the boxing world. And what is that sophistication? Part of it is the ability to counterpunch, mm -hmm. the ability to anticipate, right? The ability to put calm in an uncalm environment, all of that. And so when I do something, he's going to react to what I do. So let me feign him and all of a sudden change the whole world right there. And oh my good, he didn't do what I thought he was going to do. You already got a little bit of a win. You already got a little different. bit of a win. Yeah, draw the attacks yeah. out. And, and then he, because he thought he was just going to throw a cold jab, he was going to counter with the right hand, or he was going to step back, create a space, make him fall in. Yeah. Faint, and then all of a sudden he steps back and nobody fell in. Oh, this guy is a little more prepared he than I thought he was. He takes the space and yeah. puts that pressure on yeah. Tyson. Yeah. He could see that, but fuck, I love this shit, man. And the jab's what important. Exciting. It's what makes it exciting. But paper can't fight paper. No, of course. And your official right. pick is? Well, I have to say Tyson Fury. I mean, I've said throughout this whole campaign mm. process that um, it's a dangerous play for for Tyson, Tyson Fury. It's a, that Francis is very athletic. He he does have this part to, to is the point where I saw that too in the CP fight in fact, where he showed a resolve. You know, he didn't fall apart yeah. when when there was a reason or could have been reasons to fall apart mm -hmm. when he was pinned down there. Um, so I saw that strength. Forget about this strength. I saw that strength. So I know it's there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got to come out, but I know it's there. Um, so if he... I, with his athleticism, that strength I just talked about, his pure power, and one other thing. Yeah, he's not a professional boxer. I think we know that. You don't need Teddy Atlas to tell you that. But he's been in a in that realm of fighting for these years. That that's the most important part. People forget that. Oh yeah, but Teddy didn't box. He didn't do that. But he's been in a realm that realm that very few people are ever in. That realm where the as I used the term before, where the devil knocks at the door, and either you open the door and let him in, or you lock the door and you don't let him in. He he's been in that realm where where there we we talked we touched on this earlier, where those temptations 
to submit, to, to give in, to compromise, where they've come to him. They've come. He, he's breathed that air. He's been at that place where that air is different, where it's thinner, mm -hmm. and, and where all of those things that can destroy people and do destroy people that aren't used to that realm. He, he's, he's been through that. He understands. He knows how to react in that realm. Mm -hmm. He knows how to live in that realm. When all these temptations come to you, when the devil comes and say, ah, you don't have to deal with this here, you know, eat this apple. Okay. Yeah, you know what I mean? You don't have to deal with this. And so he's what he hasn't had as far as in the technical part of boxing and all he's had in the realm of fighting mm -hmm. in that domain yeah. that that is the most important part. He he's he's a professional fighter here yeah. and here. He understands what, you know, he, he, he does have an asbestos fireman suit on to, to deal with that fire that comes to you, that if you weren't in that realm, you would just get burnt up. Yeah. He does have that. And with that, and with the power, and with the athleticism, he's got a chance. Got a chance. Yeah. But at the end of the day, my pick would be Fury. And if I had... Is it a victory? Uh, I think that... It's up to Fury if, if he wants to promote and he wants to play and everything, he, he could, it's dangerous, but he could kill rounds moving around and kill rounds, you know, and do that. And next thing you know, we get deep into rounds and we were looking at something we didn't think. We thought we were going to see an ending either way. And you can see a decision, you know, a, 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 a distance fight. But the most important thing is that... Um, we're not near the end for him. And that, yeah. to me, that's the most important thing is yeah. that uh, I got to talk to a good person. Likewise. No, brother, nobody does it better. I'll tell you that. And this wasn't just about the fight itself. For me, it was more about me. Like when I found out you were here, I was like, yo. And then you were very gracious. Even as you were leaving breakfast, my strength coach was like, he appreciated the way you said bye to me, but said bye to everyone. Those are like characters of a good person. And I appreciate you for that. Nobody does it better. I have flowers right now. I'll give you your flowers, brother. I'll give you your flowers, but you're the legend. Teddy, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And also, no, I, I need I needed that. I needed this conversation. So yeah, that's it. Rumble, young man, rumble. Oh, sorry. Young man ramble, episode what? Three, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate you. Don't think I didn't know that you needed something, and I hope I provided it. No, you did. Because uh, thank you so much, man. You know, you yeah. like I said, uh Never forget your greatest strength. Your yes, greatest sir. strength is what you touched on and gave me a little credit for, and I appreciate it. It's you. It's your character. Yes, sir. Really Likewise, is. Man. Thank you so much, man. Hey, guys. What's up? Izzy here. Like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoyed this video.